I find it extremely ironic that men are now the victims of systems put in place by men and somehow they like blame women for it. Like to acquire a wife, you used to have to have land, property, money. Now they're upset they have to pay for a first date. Like that's literally your own fault. Say what now, what now? Well, all right, if you want to go there, in order for you to get a husband back in the day, you had to be submissive, feminine, have some skills around the house, not be covered in god-awful tattoos, and have a body count that didn't rival that of Robocop 2. We're not upset over the fact that we're expected to pay for the first date. That's been standard for quite some time. It's that we're expected to pay for literally everything. We're also expected to be in peak physical condition at all times, be over six feet tall. We're also expected to drop the GDP of a third world nation on an engagement ring for you. We're also expected to submit to you, to accept the trauma that you refuse to resolve, and my personal favorite, provide for your entire lifestyle while expecting nothing in return added onto our lives. And when we question what we're getting in exchange for your demands, you look at us bewildered as if we dare ask such a question. Because in your eyes, the fact that you breathe our oxygen is somehow a fair enough addition onto our lives. So with all of those demands and nothing to offer, is it really a surprise that men feel kind of bitter towards the idea of being with you y'all set that up women didn't even have rights back then so like mm, next um showing emotions so like well we can't show emotion to who women literally beg you to show emotions but you don't feel cool when you do it in front of your boys your fault really Okay, woman, I'm gonna go ahead and give you the benefit of the doubt and assume that you have the brain capacity of a typical sewer rat. Now, I feel like I'm being more than generous with that particular assessment of you and your so-called intellect, so don't complain. You see, woman, you straight up demand that we open ourselves up to you for reasons you don't even fully comprehend. And, as men have stated millions of times, we don't like to because the end result is always the same. You find us unappealing after we open up and you weaponize our emotions against us at the first possible moment. There's no no benefit for us to do so. We're more comfortable opening up to our friends because we share the sacred right known as brotherhood. Brothers before wars, David. If we have fellow brothers, we trust them implicitly to the point where we would straight up follow them into battle. And judging from your attitude, I wouldn't even back you up if you got into a drunken argument with a stranger outside of a dive bar. I'd just leave and drive back home and assume you'd strongly and independently figure out the rest of your problems without me. So what chance do you think you have in me trusting you with my emotions? I'll give you a hint. It's a number I attach directly to your personality and your worth on the dating marketplace. Nothing! Absolutely nothing! Stupid! You're so stupid! Um, expectations like men are expected to be this, da da da. By who? The expectations were put in place by men. And they're definitely not held up to. <laughs> not anymore. Your fault. Like, not my man, but like... <sighs> Well, yes, certain expectations were set by us, and for most of history, society, women included, accepted these expectations. A woman was to be pretty, peaceful, and didn't feel the need to have her soiled wasp's nest of slimy nightmares played with by every Chad and Tyrone in the Tri-County area. However, our expectations got replaced with unreasonable demands, and that's not our fault. And as much as I would love to blame you for it all, I can't entirely do that either. You're merely the instrument. You were brainwashed into thinking that you're worth more than you currently are. And you've also been tricked into thinking that you're smarter than you are. Neither one could be further from the truth. You mindlessly parrot all of the talking points you were force fed in school and on social media. And that's because there isn't a cell in that endless pit between your ears that is capable of an independent thought. And even if it was, I'm not sure you could keep an independent thought going for more than two and a half seconds before you get a headache. You just seem naturally unintelligent. So do humanity a favor and stop pretending otherwise. Where are all the good men that don't cheat? Where are all the good men that still respect women to understand that they don't deserve to be played with, lied to, and manipulated? Where are all the good men that want to prioritize their family, their girlfriends, and the people around them that matter? Where are all the good men that know the sacrifice of a woman when she's at home with the kids or she's making a house a home and they appreciate it. <laughs> hey, hey. 
you really need to get the wax cleaned out of your ears, you dopey broad. How many times do I have to tell you? All of the good men that you actively ignored for the last two decades have been hanging out over at Skeeter's house. Last weekend, we were helping Skeeter out with this new sport he invented. It's kind of like a combination of polo, tag, and the assault obstacle course from American Gladiators, except this one involves electric bikes, golf clubs, and a whole bunch of Nerf blasters. We even assigned each other some really cool code names like the Jackal, Hacksaw, and the Warden. So all of the guys who were over at Skeeter's house the other day Tell this broad your code name in the comment section. If you don't have one, make yours kick-ass, but like 1980s kick-ass, if that makes sense. Now, the rules themselves get kind of complicated. It couldn't be helped, but that still didn't stop us from making a total mess in Skeeter's backyard. But you know Skeeter, right? He needed to dig up that acre anyway so he could install a charity dodgeball court. So it ended up working out for everybody. Where are all the men that are happy to go to work every single day knowing that the home and the house that they built is because they sacrifice time away from their children. Where are all the good men that are trying to balance work, a romantic relationship, their kids, trying to do all the right things and still feel like they're falling short? Where are all the good men that understand that women can be crazy, but you love them anyway? <laughs> Man, you are one pathetic loser. <laughs> No offense. Oh, those men. I'm sorry, I totally misunderstood. You meant the good men who wanted nothing more than to find a wife and settle down with a family, as has been the tradition since civilization laid its first brick? Oh, man, that is a toughie. They're not easy to find anymore, but have you tried anywhere and everywhere? Yeah, if you just look there, you're bound to find one. Well, not anymore. Let's face it, you're clearly used up and not worth anybody's time anymore. You claim that these men are impossible to find because you won't stop complaining about it. It's just that we're giving you the same courtesy that you gave us back in your prime. We're ignoring you now. We're ignoring you because you're a walking, talking train wreck of terrible life choices. And even if we wasted an hour of our lives trying to get to know you over a cup of coffee, we already know that you have baggage, mouths you expect us to feed, and that you have unresolved trauma that you'll expect us to either deal with or fix for you. Sorry, woman. We're not in the business of taking care of your trauma, your spawn, or your financial problems. It's your bed. Now it's time for you to deal with those particular stains on your own. There are all the good men that understand that things are not always going to be easy, but they're not going to go out and cheat or be out in the club to fill their ego instead of making it work within their relationship. Where are all the good men that still have integrity? They do exactly what they say they're going to do and they never fall short. Where are these men? Because according to women, there are no good ones left. Okay, bye. You're not just wrong, you're stupid. Now wait just a minute. And you're ugly, just like your mom. You know what? I'm very sorry for the miscommunication here because I think I know what you're asking now. You're not asking for good men. You're asking to find one of the rarest men of all. You're asking for an honorable Chad. And that's an admirable quest, but you're better off trying to find a unicorn that defecates gold and urinates treatments for your case of herpes. You see, lady, the honorable Chad is the rarest of them all. In fact, scholars can't even determine if they exist. But even if you do end up finding one in the wild, he's going to ignore you. He will not not sacrifice his integrity or his dignity to even talk to you for five minutes. He's either going to be too busy working on himself or dedicating his time to his wife, who is 20 times hotter than you, and his kids, who are 20 times better behaved than yours. You're asking for the impossible, but you have nobody to blame but yourself for choosing the worst possible men. And there isn't a self-respecting man alive who's going to give you the time of day now. We can't spare any. We're too busy heading over to Skeeter's house. You blew it. Fish. Have you ever wondered why women on their birthdays or a Mother's Day always say, I just want to do nothing. I want to do absolutely nothing. That's all I want for my birthday. Honestly, I don't care what we do or what it looks like. I just don't want to have to plan or coordinate anything. And typically they're saying that because they are tapped out. They've been planning and doing and coordinating everything for everybody. And this is what happens. They say, I don't want to do anything. Okay, can you just take the reins and you run from here? And the husband will go, sure, of course, babe. So what are you thinking? Do you want a massage or do you want dinner? And, and if dinner, like, do you care where we go? I'm gonna book a reservation. Like, I was thinking this place or this place, which one do you want? And if you want a massage, can you send me the link? Cause I forget where you like to go. And yeah. And uh, what do you want for your birthday? Oh, you want, you want, okay. Can you send me the link for that? I need the link so I can buy it. So do you mind sending me what you want? And, I'll, and um, who do you think should watch the kids? I mean, I could call a babysitter, but I don't have their numbers. Can you give me their numbers? And maybe I'll call my parents. Who do you think I should? Do you mind calling my parents and you can talk to them? 
And do we have anything on that day? What day do you want to do it, by the way? Do you want to do it on your birthday or do you want to do it on Sunday? Or like a Saturday easier? Are you taking the day off from work? What day do you want to do it? Get to the goddamn point, egg. Okay, duly noted. I'm gonna go ahead and just completely wing it for your next birthday. Uh, so with that out of the way, I just got some questions. Um, okay, where are my notes? Uh, where did I... Oh, okay, here we go. So when you're ultimately disappointed with the restaurant I booked because you wanted to go somewhere else and didn't tell me, how long should I sleep on the couch to make it up to you? Okay, that long, huh? Yeah. And uh, when you don't like the masseuse that was reserved, how much time should I set aside to grovel for your forgiveness? Okay, great. That actually seems pretty reasonable this time. Got another one here. How much time should I set aside for you to scream relentlessly because you hate it when my parents watch our kids? Yeah, that sounds about average. One last question question when I ultimately screw up the gift because you know I will how many days until my lawyer should be expecting a call from yours about the divorce all right fantastic well I'm off to go completely screw up your birthday and I'll once again prove that I'm a terrible husband <laughs> what's that oh yeah I like you too and the woman is sitting there going I literally all I said I want to do is nothing I want to plan nothing I want to do nothing and now you're asking me to plan it you're asking me to tell you what to buy me you're asking me to tell you what day to do I'm, you're asking me if the babysitter's number you're asking me what restaurant I want to go to you're asking me if I want a massage and to send you the link you're asking me all these things when what I really wanted to do was I wanted to wake up make not one decision maybe sleep in maybe not have to think about cooking dinner or folding laundry or wiping the kids nose I wanted to have to not think about it I wanted a day where my brain could rest and just be for me because that's what I never get. And I was thinking that maybe one day I could have that. But no, I have to tell you all the things. This happens to women all the time. And men will say, oh my God, just tell me what you want. And they say, I am telling you what I want. I want to do nothing. And they think the problem is men aren't hearing it because they don't understand what nothing means. We, we mean we truly want to do nothing. We want to think about nothing, plan nothing. I don't even care where we go to dinner. It's a trap. Well, of course, it's probably a trap. Oh, no, no, no. You know exactly what you want, and it's far from nothing. We know better than to believe those obvious lies. When a woman says she wants nothing for her birthday, if a man does give her nothing, then she will harbor a grudge against her husband that'll make the feud between the Hatfields and the McCoys seem quaint by comparison. Your husband is asking these questions because he wants to make your birthday as perfect and as stress-free as possible because this man lives to make you happy and to see you smile so he wants to make sure that you get your favorite food visit your favorite places and have a break from the kids so he wants to consult with you on the logistics because you've made it obvious that you do not trust him to do those things on his own so he either annoys you with the questions to ensure that you have a wonderful and memorable birthday or he takes stabs in the dark and you end up pissed off at him for not doing anything right you're setting your husband up for failure and then resenting him when he ultimately fails because he's not doing your birthday the right way so I guess you are getting yourself exactly what you want for birthday if what you want is a big old box of resentful rage against the man that loves you. So happy birthday. And if you know me well enough because you're my, my husband and, and you should, you'll know what I want to eat. You'll know restaurants that I hate, food that I hate, food that I like because you're my husband. And when it comes to a gift, you, you know what I want because you're my husband. So you should know, right? And I'm lucky because I have that kind of husband, but not everybody does. So I'm just here to serve as a friendly reminder that if your wife tells you she wants to do and plan nothing on her birthday, she means it. Nice try. Oh, so a good husband magically knows everything about you, and that would imply that bad husbands just want to make sure you're getting everything you want by asking questions? Has it ever occurred to you in that insanely damaged container of spoiled cornmeal that you call a brain that men actually interpret information differently than women? He's logically trying to get the hard stuff out of the way so you can have the easiest day possible. So maybe, instead of endlessly bitching and moaning about how a good husband just knows what you're thinking, maybe it's not that big of a deal that you answer a few basic questions to let him plan a few surprises for your birthday. He wants to make your day about you. He wants to make you feel special, but you're so hung up on the idea that he's a bad husband because his brain operates differently than yours. So maybe you could meet him halfway and just answer some basic questions instead of immediately trying to find out ways to make him feel like a useless sack of garbage. Because working with your husband so he can make you happy, that's actually something most women wouldn't have a problem doing. It's called being a good wife. You should look into to it sometime.
And that's gonna do it for today's video, gentlemen and gents. And as always, if you find that my particular brand of humor is bringing you to the brink of laughter, then why don't you scroll on down and click that like and subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Make sure to leave your code names down in the comments section. Let's give the good old fashioned middle finger to the YouTube algorithm. Every single one of you are a bunch of fantastic sons of bee stings. Thank you so much for checking out the new video and until next time, peace out homies.